A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now that very day, two of the disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty, in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers had handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some of the women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find the body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, How foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and so enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way, and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them, who were saying, The Lord has been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel passage, we come upon a curious expression when Jesus addresses the two disciples in their dismay, discouragement, and disillusionment. He says to them, How slow of heart you are to believe. As all of you know, I'm sure, I am not a medical doctor, and most certainly not a cardiologist. So, if I were to comment on things medical, I would be running the risk of revealing my ignorance more than anything else. However, like all of us, I have had contact with persons who were on the edge 
of losing their lives. Many times in the course of the several years that I was chaplain for the local fire department in Texas, where I lived before moving back to Maryland, I would ride in the box, as it was called. That was the way that the medical service of the fire department described our ambulances. They call it the box. Occasionally when a call would come in and I was at the fire station, or one of them, a medical call, I would ride in the box that is in the back of the ambulance. And when we received persons who had either suffered an accident or perhaps a heart attack or some other serious illness, one could easily watch the monitors above our heads and see how their pulse was slowing. I thought of this experience when I read today's gospel, where we find that curious expression of Jesus. He says to the two disciples, how slow of heart you are to believe. I could see there riding in the box sometimes people's pulse rate diminishing as we rush them to the hospital. After our very able paramedics attended to their immediate needs, I would introduce myself sometimes to the patients and say, I am the chaplain for the fire department. Would you like to pray? On more than one occasion, a patient there in the box would reach out and grab my hand and clearly indicate that they wanted to pray. And as we did so on our way to the hospital, as I said a few simple words in prayer for them and for their recovery, often it would happen that their pulse rate would rise. And more than once, I witnessed that anatomical measurement of their heart come back to something which is close to normal. How slow you are, slow of heart. When our hearts slow, we risk dying, but we can restore our spiritual pulse, if we will, by listening to Jesus. And we might help others who are suffering from a slowness of heart in times of crisis by speaking with Jesus a word of hope, hope which will not disappoint, a word of hope which is like the word of hope that Jesus spoke to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. It quickens our hearts at times when we may be slow of heart. It gives us hope. Today, as you go through your day, consider speaking a word of hope, a word of life, and not just any kind of life, but life in its fullness. To those who may be in this present crisis, slow of heart to believe. The effect of such a word can be quite transformational and deeply affect the hearts of those whose hope were was diminishing. Quickly, one simple spiritual note may be precisely the remedy that so many in our circumstance and day are in need of. Speak that word as Jesus spoke it on the road to Emmaus. God bless you.